I prefer living in the middle of nowhere. When you talk to people, you exchange ideas and your skills, experiences go up. You don't get that in isolation, so you have to get out of isolation every now and then to, to get some more knowledge. So, my name is uh, Johannes Gunnar Thorstensson. I started in game development probably back in 2002-ish, or 2000, I guess, uh, with modding in the modding community of the Marathon Trilogy, made by Bungie. But this sort of faded out during elementary school because I thought, you know, impossible to work with games. I mean, there's no game developers or game development companies in this area. It's an area of 1,200 people. So it's just you know fishing community, community and far, mostly farming community and that kind of stuff and some factories and so on. But that's about it. My friends were going to become electricians, uh, carpenters, and you know the, the, the practical stuff. So I sort of gave up on the dream of making games. And it wasn't until about the age of maybe 18 when I saw a lecture or a presentation about game development uh, university in Sweden the University of Hovde. There I realized, like, wait a minute, I can actually study this, because this was not possible in Iceland. There's no universities, or at least back then, that provided that kind of stuff. So I, you know, studied sound and then self-taught myself programming. Um, I also, before studying game development, I studied art. So I, I got like a little bit of everything. After I came back from Sweden, I realized that you know, I didn't know any game developers in Iceland, and, and I was getting like a slight withdrawals, I guess, from you know, socializing with game developers because I you know had been socializing for several years in Sweden, and then suddenly went here and it was cold turkey <laughs> regarding regarding that kind of interaction with people. We need some kind of a community because people are just sitting in their basements and doing games alone. So me and. Uh, a couple of other people. They started what we called Leikja Samsudan, and they managed to set up game jams and, and uh, events, and they have monthly meetups in Reykjavik and so on. So then finally we had the possibility, and I had the possibility, to meet the other game developers and talk to them and make connections. And then they sort of created their own identity, which is now Game Makers Iceland. I run some games community stuff in, in Reykjavik. I run an organization called Game Makers Iceland, which is um, sort of focused on, I mean, just anybody who, who makes games in, in Iceland, pretty much. So that includes people working in the industry, but also hobbyists and just people who are sort of interested in, in it casually. Uh, we run like meetups and, and game jams in Reykjavik. At the time, there wasn't really a sort of good community organization. There was an organization for people working in the industry there wasn't really sort of a community or a group or anything. So I think actually the first thing Johannes and I did together was we started an IRC channel for just like people who were doing that kind of thing in Iceland, um, which, yeah, I don't remember how many people. It was like maybe 10 people at its peak in that IRC channel. That sort of evolved in a way into the Game Makers Iceland organization, which I now help run. I think pretty soon after that, he, he got the idea to start uh, Iceland's Game Jam. After this was all finally built, we, so that means we, we finally managed to build the underlying structure. We decided to go to a game jam in uh, Denmark, which was hosted by um, uh, Tim, Tim Garbos, who is actually here at the Isolation Jam now. And he basically hosted, yeah, called, it was called Axel Game Jam, or Axel Jam, and hosted in, in Vallekilde in Denmark. 
There was a game jam in uh, Denmark called the Exile Game Jam that kind of prided itself as being like, let's get out of the city of Copenhagen and go to like uh, the countryside and, and just jam in like a cool kind of, um, it's like a boarding school. So, you know, it's like away from everything. And Johannes actually showed up there, um, I think three or four years ago and was just kind of like, this is the most people I've seen <laughs> in a really long time. Yeah, I was there at this kind of table in this crummy bar in Copenhagen and then he was like, Exile, what about we do isolation jam in the middle of nowhere in Iceland? And I was like, yeah, I, I'm in. I remember jokingly say, telling them like, you know, I, I think I could do more isolation than this. And they said like, go for it, do it. And uh, just a couple of months later, we had the first isolation jam in 2014. It sold out in a couple of minutes, I think. Not hard though, because I had like five or 10 tickets. I, th I think sort of the, the maximum capacity that I did was like 10 or 13. And then I hoped that people would sort of cancel. <laughs> So it wouldn't be too crowded. This sort of sparked the idea and also it also showed me that it can be done, easily be done, because I thought like, okay, if I scale it down to like five to ten people, I get the isolation and I get it so that I can handle it. Eight people in here with just loads of desks and we somehow managed to squeeze in here. Some years it was very, very tight. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isolation Jam will probably not go back to its roots anytime soon because my farm is now pretty much doesn't have the capacity because now I have a family and a kid and the, the bedrooms have been turned into children related rooms, mm -hmm. <laughs> nappy changing and so on. We won't get that kind of isolation but I hope to experiment with different kinds of isolation and there are plenty of ideas you know we have this beautiful venue here that I'm very happy with and, and they're really helpful the people behind this and you know making sure that this works for us and so this is one possibility but you know I want to experiment with more places with low overhead to make it also feel less of a commercial establishment I guess and more like yeah like I said like more like friends in a cabin. The important thing about game jams is not the games that are being made, because most of the time you make a game at a game jam, you rush it and it's like, it's not good. Or, you know, it's, it, was, it was really good compared to the time you had, but it's not something you're going to actively develop after the game jam. Most game jam games, they, they just sort of get put into a storage drive and just wait there. But it's more about the ideas that get born and then along with all the people and how they combine and how they sort of mix throughout the long term. That is the importance of game jams because you know, I hear, see someone making something and I'm already personally getting a lot of ideas now like, oh, I should get into that. And it's this interaction of ideas and concepts that sort of, that's the product of a game jam. It's not the games. Well, there are some games that get made that like, you know, get big. And someone hits the, uh, the jackpot, I guess, like finds the, the correct game design that works. But the main product most of the time is the, the ideas that get born and then maybe reused five years from now, ten years from now. I think they have a historical uh, thing where there were not that many indie people, not that many people doing experiments. Everything was like you got a budget from Bobby, blah, 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 you had to make a big thing. So it was an, a thing where people experimented and made failures. Uh, if it's only like a weekend, a few days, that's everything you have to lose. So I think it's been extremely important to like push the boundaries of like testing things, experiments. Today, I think you can. You, it's more possible to actually do that, uh, and it's happening everywhere. Uh, so I think today, it, game jams are also just bringing people together. The people I have the studio with, uh, we wouldn't work together if it weren't for game jams. I think working with, with other game designers in game jams like this, it teaches you a lot about your own skill set, I think, and figuring out like where your skill set fits into a group of people, which which is very valuable. The biggest thing is like this scope idea. 
seeing really like what, what, what can you make, make in a few days. And, and yeah, that has different consequences when you're working in a team. We're trying to kind of bring together the Icelandic community more because there's a lot of people making games in Iceland, making, and not just like, you know, there's people trained in doing audio for video games, doing all sorts of things for video games, but kind of separate in their corners. So right now, what we're also doing here, which I'm really fond of, is kind of networking and talking to, we pulled in one other Icelander, and then of course, like linking everybody together. So that's really nice uh, as a side of this game jam to kind of, we pull, pulled in one guy and he's actually a teacher now in another big program, which means that we pull him in, then he pulls in all of his students and we like, yeah. I think the importance of the game jams is, I mean, it's a, it's a way of uh, experimenting and it's a way of, uh, I mean, you have to make mistakes. So if you put yourself in a situation or an environment where you make mistakes, that's a good thing because that's how you learn. The only, I mean, at least that's how I look at it. The only real way of learning is trying something out and it's probably not going to work. <laughs> Most of the time it's not. So yeah, this is a nice time of just concentrated failures, like try to fail as much as you possibly can. So it's a nice way of trying out new things that you wouldn't necessarily do at your job because if it's your job, it might maybe not work out, but yeah, here's a nice place where you can just try out different things, fail a lot, and hopefully something will succeed from that. Okay, Iceland is so lacking in polygons. <laughs> have, you, have you looked where? There's no trees. We, we, we made a joke that one of the other developers was joking about like, oh, where, where they should worry about adding trees to our landscape. And like, I stare at, out at this landscape and there's like, nothing here. <laughs> but like, it's like there's a poly budget for the country and it's, it's all been used up. Uh, Iceland's great. It's my second time being here. Uh, my first time I was like 20 years old and had no money and didn't do anything. Uh, and this time I'm doing the whole ring road after this jam. So like I'm meeting up with a buddy, we're hopping in a car. It's gonna be great. Uh, I love the isolation aspect. <laughs> I went on a hike before I uh, came to this jam and saw like one other person on my entire hike and that was exactly how I want it. <laughs> Iceland is a cool place. Interesting because there's no trees at all and I'm used to to that, that there, there's trees everywhere because I come from Finland and there's forest and trees almost everywhere. Yeah, I really enjoy the scenery because it looks like it's from outer space or some alien planet when you go to some parts of the country. Yeah, I mean, what I like the most here is nature. Like, that's just, it's so nice to be so in close contact with nature. So I hope people appreciate that. I hope also they treat nature with the respect it's due. Um, so yeah, I think, because I've been living abroad quite a lot uh, and coming back home, yeah, the biggest thing was just being again close to nature and yeah, enjoying that, enjoying the quietness of this place as well. That's something I hope people are like really appreciating because you, most people here I think live in cities so you never hear like, you never hear the sound of kind of silence, you know, and that's really like every time on the countryside I'm like, oh yes. And you just hear the bird go like, doo, 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 doo. Like, yes, this is great. Yeah, for the people who are visiting and, and, and maybe coming here for the first time, uh, Iceland has a lot of things to offer. For one, we have a lot of nothingness. We have a lot of peace and quiet. Like, uh, wherever you are in Iceland, you're always just 15 minutes away from nature. You can always just go out and just be in like unspoiled nature. Uh, I think that's a really interesting thing probably for some people who've only grown up in cities or bigger places i think that's a really really big thing and maybe just also just a different way of doing things i mean yeah iceland has been kind of isolated for a very long time so maybe we're, we're, we're quite strange with some of the things we do so it's always cool to get a new perspective of, of how people live and how they operate and what they do so yeah i really hope some of the people who are come here see Maybe like a place that they want, want to visit again, and maybe again and again, and I don't know, maybe somebody will end up living here because of this jam. Yeah, I think Iceland has a lot to offer people interested in games. I think the games industry isn't, isn't huge here, the, the like output of games isn't huge, but that's, that's changing. You know, Iceland is a, is a unique place in a lot of ways, and I, I think that makes our cultural exports 
unique. I think it makes our, our music and our, our film unique. And I think Icelandic games have like enormous potential to be unique and as influential as, as cultural exports as, as Icelandic music and, and film have been. Definitely time flows different here. I'm way more protect, productive. Um, I think my phone is charged for longer. Don't have to charge it that often. At least it seems to me that way. And things are just slow and kind of really nice. And there's something very profound in just standing in the landscape and looking at the sky and seeing the weather change. And yeah. I don't know, I've been here so many times, it just feels very different than the, the first times I've, uh, I've come here, but every time I think the common thing is for sure the openness, the, the relation to the sky somehow, also the buildings and the architecture and, and, and the, the, the environments all sort of point upwards and you just end up looking up. I mean, now we've had four days of just sun that also kind of promises like, wow, it's actually this big sky because there's, there's not much clutter, there's no trees. And uh, also just feels really inspiring somehow to, to experience a different thing, like not, not, you can't see it very often. And I think that the game jam is, is a really good opportunity for that because you can just, you can pour all that inspiration into something and then maybe it, uh, it spawns into something else uh, yeah, or, or continues into a life of its own maybe, or I don't know. We just went for a hike and we went to uh, what's called like a retir, which is a sheep sorter thing. And Johannes told us some stories about sheep that sometimes don't make it back in time for winter or don't get found by the, by the owners, by the farmers. And told us about sheep that sometimes get lost in highlands and they're like so inaccessible that they have to like build a zip line to, to like rescue them, um, which I thought was pretty inspiring. I came here with my partner, my girlfriend, um, Marin who uh, has just finished her first year of art school, or at least took a break from doing art and is now back in art school and um, is getting really good at drawing in Procreate on the iPad Pro. And we're basically trying to figure out like a pipeline where I can easily incorporate her like images into a game and make something either a 2D game or even like a 3D world where her like uh, watercolor style drawings kind of make sense. We are currently working on making a farm uh, with a mountain and there is a sheep stuck up on that mountain so we need to get that down so that's what we're working on. It's, it's inspired by some sheep that were stuck in the West Fjord. Uh, there's like the peninsula or like the upside there. There, uh, there has been sheep living there in the mountains for some years and they couldn't get them down because it was just like they would have to helicopter them down so yeah so it's, it's inspired by real life sheep. Yeah. Yeah so I'm working on a combination of chat roulette and LARPing if you've heard of Netflix's Bandersnatch, the like interactive Black Mirror episode, yeah. we I sold through my company Escape Character, we sold like tickets to like a version of that where a live actor plays all the characters in a TV show that you and up to four friends do together. So going from that, from that piece of content I made, which was ticketed, I wanted to get something that felt like a live experience but didn't actually involve me hiring a live actor. This jam is uh, mostly about me finding like using this as an excuse to spend several days on technology development. So the outcome of this jam will be some sort of game, but most of my time will actually be, be spending on like web, backend web dev rather than game design. Uh, I made a game where it's a, basically a marble game where you build a truck out of pieces and uh, you can put uh, marbles to follow the, that path and uh, except the marbles are sheep. Essentially, <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Just an editor with dick around with <laughs> with balls and ships. Our game is called "What Goes Up Must Go Under." <laughs> I don't know. We're still working on the name. Basically, we came up with a character that is in the game and we called it "Goes Under" because I read it in a Terry Pratchett book and I thought it was a funny word. But basically, it's a ziplining game, and it was inspired, I think, by. I don't know what it's inspired you. You came up with the idea. Line <laughs> the great zipline of Iceland. Yeah. I know. No. We wanted to make something that can be played in a big play space that is is facilitated by these devices that we kind of got now that we want to play around with uh, the Oculus Quest, where suddenly you don't have a wire, so you can rotate and, and do do stuff with your hands and 
be more free than with the old stuff. One person can build a level, the other one can already try it out and tell them, hey, can you move this over there? This is maybe not cool yet. And so you have this, this mm -hmm. game design iteration together and people can just join and try it out. And uh, yeah, it's not limited to, to one mode or the other or to doing it alone and then trying it out. So I think that was mainly the goal. And then we came up with this zip lining mechanic where you, mm -hmm. one person builds, the other person can already like zip line from yeah. platform to platform. My game, it's unclear what it will finally be, but right now it's like, about exploration, you're on an island, there's these sort of different little environments. I'm gonna try and fill them with little secrets and character, but it's a, it's a photography game at its heart, I guess. There's gonna be little creatures that you photograph. Like right now, it's like you can walk on the beach and you see a rock and you can pick up the rock and under the rock, a little crab will scuttle away and you wanna try and get a picture of the crab. What this game is ultimately gonna be, like, I don't know, you know, is it get as many, get all the animals or is it just like, have, play for five minutes and like enjoy the environment. I'm not sure. <laughs> so for the Cham, we made a Game Boy game for original brick Game Boy with all the glory four stage of green. And the reason why we decided to go with this kind of like a, a little bit obsolete platform is that I've done something like 60 to 70 game champs and it gets a little bit boring to do PC game after PC game. So I like to tackle new challenges with more challenging platforms for each champ. Yeah, this was actually first time for me making actual pixel art. So it was fun trying to make. Um, I'm trying to make a sheep herding game, kind of. So the, the main idea is there you're in that, so we went to that pen, right? So I just imagining like it filled with sheep and then what it would be like if you were standing in the middle of that and trying to actually find like a particular sheep. Um, so I thought, why not make a game of that? So the idea is that there will be sheep running all around you in, uh, in a first person view and you have a staff and with the staff you can uh, suck a sheep in your staff and then the, 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 the tip of the staff has a collar on it and the color of the sheep you just sucked in got in the staff. You can combine colored sheep to change the color of your staff and then shoot the sheep in the pen when you have the correct color. That's a theory at least. In practice I have a bunch of triangles running around uh, trying to act like sheep which, which they're not, not doing at the moment. <laughs> there are several projects being uh, worked at the Game Jam here now this year. Uh, I haven't looked at all of them, uh, but I've seen them. I've sort of been keeping an eye on them. And, and my favorite is, you know, well, I guess my personal favorite currently, at least what I've seen, is the, the Game Boy game. Because just, you know, having a physical Game Boy and I'm playing a game in 2019, it's just, it feels surreal. And it being made here is just, ah, I, I can now go and say, like, there was a Game Boy game made here. And I, I feel that is, that is, that is huge for me, but there are also loads of other interesting projects here. I mean, we have there are plenty of projects with involves, involving sheep, for example, because mm -hmm. I guess people are inspired by all the sheep around here and the, and the lambing season, because this, the, the, the game jam is hosted, usually hosted at the end of the lambing season, so there are cute fluffy lambs all over the place. Guess we're gonna have this with a round of applause to you guys. To our and the jam was great. Uh, I, I had so much fun. I learned a lot from the other Godot users. I learned a lot from other people just about like you know their approaches to making their games. Uh, some really cool art styles that are inspiring. My game, uh, I was very satisfied with. I think. Uh, it's kind of an idea I've had kicking around for a while. I didn't finish everything, but you never finish everything. You have to cut features when you do a jam game. You're never gonna fit all your ideas in. I may keep working on it. I don't know, maybe, you know, sell a more expanded version. That's always the sort of the, the hope, I guess. You have a project that you can do that with.
Yes, yeah, so, so I really like seeing people play the game and I was also happy with our process of creating a game because we pretty fast were able to do like this very simple version of game and check that the controls feel good and then it was all about just putting the content in. And what really surprised me that we were able to schedule the development of the game in a way that we had to do no crunching at all, which is very rare with game jams when you have a really, really limited time. You usually need to spend a little bit of your night's sleep to make the game, but it wasn't uh, in this jam the case. We focused on this multiplayer thing because we wanted to figure it out. It was the first time we did it with this plugin that we used, so it was nice to do it together and talk about how it works and get an understanding. And while doing this little project, I think we made a bunch of code and tools that we now can also pull out and use in other projects or in our main projects that we work on. So I think it was like also some, some, some kind of education and building a little, little tool set to, to use for other stuff. The, at a jam like this, where you work in, for two days on, on a product and then you show it already, it's, uh, it's a good opportunity to, to explore the things that you wouldn't go for in a commercial production or somewhere where you have, where you have to realize something. And this prompted me and, and I learned from this to incorporate this in my normal work because this is how you come up with good ideas, to, to, to explore the boundaries, to explore the, the craziness. Like I hope that someone here will think, like, oh yeah, you can make games in uh, middle of nowhere, Iceland or any other remote place. And because many game developers, they, they dislike the city, they want to be, you know, slightly more isolated. Maybe not, not this isolated, but slightly more isolated at least. But they think it's not possible. They think you need to be in the hub, like in the Silicon Valley or, or Hudde in Sweden or Stockholm or Gothenburg and so on, or Reykjavik in this case. But I hope that my plan with this for the long term is just to make them see that you can do it here. And then maybe we will have less of a brain drain from this area because all the programmers they're just moving to Reykjavik or out of the out of the country. You have all these people sort of sitting together, and they start ta talking. And they're from different parts of the world. In you know, Iceland, we have Russia, America, Canada, Romania, Denmark, Finland, and, and the list goes on. So you have different ideas, different upbringing. It's like a stew of game developers, like mixing together their ideas and experiences. And it, it just brings up some really interesting results. That's essentially what I'm doing here, like game developer development. I don't have much time to make games here. I try to, but I'm usually sort of, of course, taking care of all this stuff here. And when I see people sitting down on a sofa, especially people that were not sitting and chatting earlier, and I see that they're connecting and exchanging ideas, that's a success for me. To me, like yes, I, I, I had a part in enabling that. I provided the, the, uh, the structure around it, the framework. And so that's my focus, I guess. And so I can say that I have like a tiny percent of each game made. Like, a, you know, I, I develop the, uh, the framework for the social interaction. <laughs> that's what, just what I really enjoyed, like enabling people to help each other.